My wife lied for 30 years about cheating with her ex. I discovered her journal revealing she still fantasizes about him. Now, she wants my trust back, can I forgive? To get straight to the point, Emma eventually confessed that she had been lying to me for three decades. When we were first dating and appeared to be exclusive, she slept with her ex one last time at a music festival and also made out with a random guy on a cruise ship. For 30 years she lied about this to the extent that we celebrated a relationship anniversary commemorating a date prior to those incidents. She also lied directly to my face multiple times last year, making me feel like I was losing my mind because I couldn't trust her. During that chaotic period when Emma was repeatedly lying, I did something wrong myself. For the first time ever, I read parts of her diary. I intended to just glance at it, but the first thing I noticed was an entry from a few months earlier where she wrote about feeling unsatisfied with life and being infatuated with someone, unsure of how to deal with it. I later discovered she was referring to a coworker named Ryan, and she told me it was just a strong physical attraction, but nothing inappropriate ever happened or was said. Eventually, Ryan left for another job. In another journal entry from a meeting a flirtatious man named Jason at a coffee shop. She wrote that she was intrigued by him and they could develop a closer friendship as long as things didn't get weird. She also mentioned not minding if I got a bit jealous, thinking it might make me value her more. Later in the entry, she admitted her mind wanders to forbidden scenarios that probably won't happen and that other people show interest in her. She feels guilty but justified it by saying I was stressed with work and not giving her enough attention. She longed for excitement and passion. Emma wrote, I feel guilty but I'm sure other women sometimes fantasize about another man. When I confronted her about this later, she again confessed to fantasizing about Jason, but insisted she never cheated and would never cheat. She claimed they only saw each other a couple times at the park, barely spoke, and never communicated outside of that. I investigated thoroughly to confirm nothing happened, and I'm fairly sure nothing did. As I read further, I discovered that every few months over the past several years, Emma had been documenting dreams about her high school ex, Michael, in her journal. For context, Michael had cheated on her, dumped her, and they continued seeing each other for a few months, trying to stay friends. They ended up sleeping together one more time at a friend's wedding, but Emma says when she started falling in love with me, she cut off all contact with him. She claims he tried calling her for a couple years, but she always ignored him and eventually changed her number. In many of the dreams, Michael would come back and be with her again, but he would often treat her poorly or make her feel inadequate. She believed this stemmed from the trauma of how their relationship ended with his infidelity. However, in some dreams, they would have sex and be together. In one dream, she wrote about being with him at a secluded beach house, and although this isn't in one dream, even though it wouldn't happen in reality, Emma wrote that she was allowed to meet her ex at a cozy cabin and ask him questions about where he's been and if he still misses her. She felt insecure thinking about all the other women he's been with over the years. They laid together on a sofa, and he removed her sweater as they mourned together. In the dream, I was present off to the side, as if I understood they still weren't over each other. She then writes that during her waking life she rarely thinks of her ex, except occasionally when she hopes he regrets how he treated her, and secretly still carries her memory with him too. In another dream from a few years ago when she was pregnant with our child, her ex returns and is dismissive of her pregnancy, knowing the baby is mine, her husband's. In other dreams, she expresses feeling insecure about all the women she imagines her ex has been with over the years. She admits to idealizing him, and even secretly fantasizing about her memories with him, even after we had been married for many years. Again, she writes about needing closure. Emma feels she should look him up online to potentially disrupt her idealizations and move on. She hadn't searched for him or had any contact in 15 years. She doesn't want to look him up while in our house, not wanting to create associations with our home, feeling it would be unfair to me, her husband. She wants to be somewhere else to process whatever emotions arise from searching for him. She writes about being generally happy, loving me and our children, but not understanding why she can't get past the high school experiences. Finally, while on a business trip to the city where she believes he currently lives, Emma looks him up, finding the city triggering. She sees on social media that he seems happy, successful, married with children. She writes that I'm just as attractive as his wife, but she's feeling insecure. He treated her poorly and didn't deserve her. She cries, writing that she deserves so much more than he could ever offer, that she deserves me, her husband, and our children. We deserve the best of her, and she needs to leave this all behind in the city. Upon returning home, she writes about not wanting to talk to him, but instead live her own life. She's proud of who she is and has become. She hopes he still looks her up and regrets how he treated her, having lost the right to know her long ago. After the trip, she feels shaken to the core from searching for him, questioning where to place her idealizations and trauma. She acknowledges the difficulty in not questioning what if, but affirms her love for the cozy life she shares with me and our kids. She also wrote many times throughout her journal about loving me, wanting to grow old together, despite these other matters. Not long after this, we had our second child. I confessed to my wife that I had read all of this, apologizing for severely invading her privacy. We had many difficult conversations over months about much of this. I processed the actual infidelity from 30 years ago first for a while, but then my thoughts began to dwell on her fantasizing about other men, particularly her attachment to her high school ex. She told me she knows she wrongly idealized her ex, recognizing he was toxic. She says that since she looked him up three years ago, it helped her move on in some way, and she hasn't thought or dreamed of him since, although I find that hard to believe. I know people can't control their dreams, and I told her it's normal to dream about people from your life, but you choose how much to dwell on it or assign meaning to it. She's convinced her subconscious has been hung up on her ex, haunting her, although again, she tried to assure me she's better now and knows how to redirect her thoughts. My wife is overall a good partner, a wonderful mother to our children, and we are very compatible and love each other. I've been learning more about her and think she may have an avoidant personality, which has led to fantasizing as a coping mechanism over the years. She has been in therapy for years, but I don't think she has really delved into this with her therapist. She seemed unaware of it when I talked with her months ago, so I'm hoping she's maybe tried to be more introspective and understand where those fantasies come from, as well as her tendency to blame it on me or feel like I'm not good enough for her or something is missing. 
Do I just need to continue to forget about it and get over it because I can't know what she thinks and shouldn't worry about it? Or is there anything I can do or that you've done in a similar situation? Honestly, part of what bothers me so much about her ex thing is that her ex was a really gross, horrible guy. She admits he was a jerk to many people in high school, had substance abuse issues back then and later in adulthood, and definitely wasn't on the same level of intelligence as my wife with no real future plans. Her high school relationship with him was very toxic too, where they were together for a couple years but broke up and fought frequently, and eventually he cheated on her, possibly more than she knows. After cheating, he said horrible things to her as well. She's told me all this and seems to know it's all true, but she still says she's idealized him and I'm like, what the heck does that mean? She told me that not everything about him was bad and that she's thought about the good things about him too. Even though he's married now, I found online that he's been married multiple times, has kids with multiple women, and still seems to be a mess. I wouldn't be surprised if he's cheated on other women since. I told my wife this in one emotional conversation, maybe not the best idea, but I was trying to see if I could open her eyes to anything she's never thought of. She isn't very good at researching or thinking deeply about things, and that's why I doubt she really has good conversations with her therapist about this stuff either. That's part of what's tough for me. I want to know if she's really trying to be introspective and change her ways of thinking, or if she's just trying to forget about all of this and move on. But I'm not her therapist so I can't know, and she never tells me anything about it. I haven't brought any of this stuff up for months, by the way. I just feel depressed about it from time to time by myself. I've almost wanted to ask her what the good things about him were, but I feel like that's a bad idea and pain shopping. I do know that she was infatuated with him, and I think she was wildly attracted to him. While she's attracted to me, I honestly think she was more attracted to him. The fighting and toxic parts probably made it feel so much more powerful and emotional, but I don't know for sure because I don't think she even thinks about it in an inquisitive way. I asked her about looking him up in his city, and she said she was worried she would accidentally run into him and wanted to see if he was there to avoid him or something. It doesn't make that much sense in a major city, but my wife is also sometimes very illogical. I trust her slightly more on this because her earlier journal entries from months before she looked him up said that she was feeling like she should maybe finally look him up so it could help her to get the high school image of him out of her mind and show her reality, but she didn't want to look him up at our home because she didn't want to build an association with him in our home, and she also wanted privacy to deal with whatever comes up after looking him up. She also was only in that city for less than 7 days for a work conference, which she was very busy at, and it turns out that he moved away from that city years before, so he wasn't even there. I asked her what if he had been single, and she said she actually assumed he was single because he was a jerk. She said she never would have reached out to him. I just have felt depressed about all of this and keep having it resurface in my mind, plus the thoughts of the beginning of our relationship and her secretly still seeing her ex while dating me. It's just the combination of all the things that's so difficult. It's also kind of been hard for me to manage because I've never been one to fantasize. I honestly haven't really known anyone well enough that I find to be as attractive to me as my wife. Of course, I see many women who I find attractive, but I've never felt infatuated with anyone I know in real life other than my wife. I'm sure if I happen to work closely with someone who I found really attractive, it could happen. It just never has in three decades. Update 1. For those who are comfortable sharing, do you have an ex from long ago who cheated on you that you still feel hung up on, consciously or subconsciously, even if you've been in a long relationship or marriage since then? Has it affected your later relationships? Do you feel like you ever idealize your ex in your memories or fantasize about them? I ask because I somewhat recently learned that my wife has been hung up on her ex from nearly 30 years ago who cheated on her, and we've been together ever since. I think it would be helpful for me to hear others' perspectives and to learn how common it is since it's brought me a lot of insecurity. Thank you. Edit. She says she hasn't thought of her ex often, but she did have occasional dreams about him that would still hurt her, where he would come back and act rude to her again, and she wouldn't feel good enough. I think she also imagined that he was out there regretting how he had treated her and still thinking of her, and she would have dreams about that too, where she was able to see him and ask him questions about if he still misses her, even though she chose to go no contact with him nearly 30 years ago and ignored his messages for years before he stopped. I do unfortunately also know that she had fantasized about him sexually, but she says that was purely physical memory. She thought of the most similar part is that my wife avoided looking him up for many years because I think she felt afraid to see him and how he was doing. When she finally looked him up in the past couple years, she saw he was married and had kids and appeared happy, and she got very emotionally upset. As beautiful as his wife and was furious that he appeared content because he had treated her so terribly. She said he had forfeited the privilege of knowing her long ago and he could never be worthy of her, me, and our family today. She said we were deserving of her love and devotion or something along those lines. Conversely, what perplexes me is that she has also seemingly romanticized her high school ex, which she claims means that he wasn't entirely bad and she occasionally tended to reflect on his positive attributes. That aspect troubled me even more because this guy was an utter jerk and failure who not only betrayed her trust and treated her horribly, but he was also known among their peers at the time as a total scumbag. When we were 17 years old, I could understand my wife being in a toxic relationship and perceiving something redeemable in this terrible person. However, after 30 years of growing into a completely different individual, it's difficult for me to comprehend that she still lingers on or idealizes the memory of this guy when she's nearly 50 years old, particularly when I've been by her side for 30 years as a wonderful, loving partner who would never betray or mistreat her in that way. Update 2. I could use some reassurance here. I recognize that the betrayal I experienced may seem minor compared to what many others have endured, but my anxious tendencies are hindering my ability to move forward. A year ago, my wife and I faced the greatest challenge in our marriage when she finally confessed to me that she had been deceiving me for nearly 30 years and that in the early months of our relationship, she had been intimate with her ex one last time. She had lied to me throughout our many years together, to the extent that we celebrated a relationship anniversary on a date that preceded these events. To complicate matters further, she didn't readily admit to these things. One day, I asked her if she had been with anyone else after our relationship anniversary date, and she replied, no, of course not, and reassured me that she had always been truthful with me. 
After that, deep down, I had doubts about her response, and I did something very wrong by reading some of her personal journal. In her journal, I discovered that she still often dreamed about her high school ex, seemed emotionally attached to him, had contemplated divorcing me years ago when I was severely depressed and in need of support, had fantasized about other men and longed for excitement and an escape from the monotony of our relationship, had moments of feeling unattracted to me and questioning our chemistry. Most recently, she had developed an infatuation with a coworker. She didn't mention the long-ago incident, so I remained unaware of it at that point. I confessed to her what I had read and apologized, and we engaged in numerous lengthy discussions over the course of weeks. She assured me that the coworker situation was merely a strong attraction and that she never expressed anything to him, and nothing inappropriate ever took place. Eventually, the guy transferred to another workplace. She also later asserted that she doesn't really think about her ex as much as she used to and that it was just her own internal struggle. After weeks of extensive conversations, she finally broke down one day and admitted to the lies from 30 years ago. When I was deeply hurt and trying to process it all, I told her I could forgive her, but I needed her to be completely honest with me, tell me the whole truth, and if there was anything else. She insisted tearfully multiple times that she had told me everything and swore on our family. Then, a week later, she had a session with her therapist. Following the appointment, she said she had more to confess and admitted to a couple of other incidents from when we first started dating nearly 30 years ago. It seemed like she couldn't muster the courage to be honest with me at that crucial moment until she discussed it with her therapist a week later. After nearly a year, my wife's therapy sessions still trigger my insecurities and fears. Whenever she has an appointment, it takes me back to that day when she had been lying to my face again, and it was only after the session that she confessed more to me. Just hearing she has a therapy appointment makes me feel somewhat nauseous, and I start imagining the things she could be revealing to her therapist, maybe secrets she's kept from me forever that I may never know. There's no way for me to be certain. I really struggle with uncertainty and the feeling that secrets are being kept from me, and I'm just trying to calm myself down. Does anyone have any advice on how to deal with this? Maybe I can talk to my wife about it. How can I feel okay with not knowing? Aside from all those things I discovered and the realization that my wife was very skilled at lying to my face for many years, there's nothing else. I guess the main thing is that on good days, I trust her and believe she really has been honest with me and is doing everything the right way now. On bad days, I still question and wonder if there's anything else she never told me about, if she could have cheated on me years ago when she wrote in her journal that she was fantasizing about another man, etc. Again, she insists she told me everything and nothing else happened, but distress still enters my mind sometimes, especially after knowing how easily she could lie to me before. I made my decision to make things work with her many months ago. We have kids, a beautiful family, and my wife, outside of all this, has been a good partner and I know she loves me, although I had to come to terms with the fact that she didn't love me as fully as I thought she did. She's an insecure, scared person who hid parts of herself from me for many years and seems to hide or fantasize when she feels stressed and overwhelmed. I think she's doing better now and she seemed to handle most of the situation correctly, but of course, I can't be entirely sure. Update 3 I'm just in a state of confusion right now after a conversation with my wife. Long story short, about a year ago, my wife and partner of nearly 30 years admitted to me that she had lied to me throughout our entire relationship and that she had cheated on me in the months. She asks if I'm happy with how things have been, and I tell her yes, I'm very happy with her and our relationship, but I also think it's healthy for us to continue having open and honest conversations about our relationship and how we're feeling, even if things are generally good. It doesn't mean anything is wrong, it just means we're continuing to prioritize our connection and communication. She gets more upset at this and says she feels like I'm never satisfied, like I'm always looking for problems even when there aren't any. She says she's been working so hard to be a better partner and to make up for her past mistakes, and it hurts that I don't seem to recognize or appreciate that. I try to reassure her that I do see and appreciate all her efforts, and I'm not trying to find problems where there aren't any, but I also don't think it's healthy for us to just avoid talking about our relationship altogether out of fear that it will cause issues. We need to be able to have these conversations in a way that brings us closer, not pushes us apart. She's crying at this point and says she doesn't know what I want from her, that she feels like she can't win. If she tries to talk about our relationship, I get upset, but if she doesn't, I also get upset. She feels like she's walking on eggshells trying to gauge my mood and figure out the right thing to do or say. I'm starting to feel frustrated and invalidated. I try to explain that I'm not trying to attack her or make her feel bad. I'm just trying to have an honest conversation about how we're both feeling and how we can continue to strengthen our relationship, but it feels like she's twisting my words and intentions, making it seem like I'm the one causing problems when all I wanted was for us to connect more. We go around in circles like this for a while, both getting more and more upset and feeling unheard. Eventually, she says she can't do this anymore tonight, that she needs space, and she leaves to go to bed in the guest room. I'm left feeling confused, hurt, and somehow like the bad guy when all I wanted was to have a loving, open conversation. I start to question myself. Am I being unreasonable? Am I not appreciating her enough? Am I the one ruining things by bringing up the past? But a part of me also knows that this dynamic isn't healthy, that I shouldn't have to feel afraid to communicate my feelings, that her reactions feel manipulative, even if unintentionally, that a truly repaired and intimate relationship requires ongoing honest communication, not avoidance and defensiveness. I don't know where to go from here. I love my wife, and I want to believe we can work through anything, but I'm starting to feel like there are some deeper issues at play, some unhealthy patterns that we need to address if we're ever going to truly heal and move forward. I think I need to do some more reflection on my own and possibly bring this up in my individual therapy, and I think my wife and I would benefit from going back to couples counseling, to have a safe space to work through these communication barriers and emotional triggers with a neutral third party. I know it won't be easy, but I have believe it's possible if we're both willing to do the hard work. I don't want to give up on us, on the love and the life we've built, but I also know I can't keep going in circles like this, can't keep suppressing my own needs and feelings for fear of rocking the boat. One way or another, something has to change. We have to find a way to come together, to truly hear and see each other, to build a relationship based on openness and emotional safety, not secrets and eggshells. I'm not going to try to have this conversation again tonight. 
I think we both need some space to cool down and reflect, but I'm not going to let it go either. For the sake of our marriage, our family, and our own well-being, we have to find a way through this. She asks if I'm happy with how things have been, and I tell her yes, I'm very happy with her and our relationship, but I also think it's healthy for us to continue having open and honest conversations about our relationship and how we're feeling, even if things are generally good. It doesn't mean anything is wrong, it just means we're continuing to prioritize our connection and communication. She gets more upset at this and says she feels like I'm never satisfied, like I'm always looking for problems even when there aren't any. She says she's been working so hard to be a better partner and to make up for her past mistakes, and it hurts that I don't seem to recognize or appreciate that. I try to reassure her that I do see and appreciate all her efforts, and I'm not trying to find problems where there aren't any, but I also don't think it's healthy for us to just avoid talking about our relationship altogether out of fear that it will cause issues. We need to be able to have these conversations in a way that brings us closer, not pushes us apart. She's crying at this point and says she doesn't know what I want from her, that she feels like she can't win. If she tries to talk about our relationship, I get upset, but if she doesn't, I also get upset. She feels like she's walking on eggshells trying to gauge my mood and figure out the right thing to do or say. I'm starting to feel frustrated and invalidated. I try to explain that I'm not trying to attack her or make her feel bad, I'm just trying to have an honest conversation about how we're both feeling and how we can continue to strengthen our relationship, but it feels like she's twisting my words and intentions, making it seem like I'm the one causing problems when all I wanted was for us to connect more. We go around in circles like this for a while, both getting more and more upset and feeling unheard. Eventually she says she can't do this anymore tonight, that she needs space, and she leaves to go to bed in the guest room. I'm left feeling confused, hurt, and somehow like the bad guy when all I wanted was to have a loving, open conversation. I start to question myself. Am I being unreasonable? Am I not appreciating her enough? Am I the one ruining things by bringing up the past? But a part of me also knows that this dynamic isn't healthy, that I shouldn't have to feel afraid to communicate my feelings, that her reactions feel manipulative, even if unintentionally, that a truly repaired and intimate relationship requires ongoing honest communication, not avoidance and defensiveness. I don't know where to go from here. I love my wife and I want to believe we can work through anything, but I'm starting to feel like there are some deeper issues at play, some unhealthy patterns that we need to address if we're ever going to truly heal and move forward. I think I need to do some more reflection on my own and possibly bring this up in my individual therapy, and I think my wife and I would benefit from going back to couples counseling to have a safe space to work through these communication barriers and emotional triggers with a neutral third party. I know it won't be easy, but I have to believe it's possible if we're both willing to do the hard work. I don't want to give up on us, on the love and the life we've built, but I also know I can't keep going in circles like this, can't keep suppressing my own needs and feelings for fear of rocking the boat. One way or another, something has to change. We have to find a way to come together, to truly hear and see each other, to build a relationship based on openness and emotional safety, not secrets and eggshells. I'm not going to try to have this conversation again tonight. I think we both need some space to cool down and reflect, but I'm not going to let it go either. For the sake of our marriage, our family, and our own well-being, we have to find a way through this.